Dwarf Lab have released the new Dwarf Mini Smart Telescope. It's a close rival to the Seastar S30 in many ways, but there are some differences. In this video, I'm going to closely compare the two and lay out how you can choose which one's the right one for you. So firstly, they are very similar devices in many ways. They both have 30 millimeter aperture telescope, a 2.1 megapixel resolution camera using the Sony IMX662 sensor. They both have 64 gig built-in storage. They both have dual lenses. One difference then appears to be weight. So at first glance, the Dwarf Mini weighs less at a stated 0.85 kilograms versus the Seastar S30 which is at 1.65 kg. However, when you look into this, the Dwarf Mini doesn't come with a tripod, but the S30 does. If you add on the Dwarf Mini tripod to buy, it adds 0.79 kilograms. So adding this together makes 1.64 kg, which is essentially identical. These are the two lowest cost, high quality smart telescopes you can buy. You can see all the 12 smart telescope options here listed by starting price. Obviously, prices will vary, so check the links below. You can ignore the Hestia at the top because that's not actually a smart telescope. If you want to know more about that or any of these other models, there are links below to two videos. One that covers the five cheapest options there, including Hestia, and another that covers all 12 of these. Both the Seastar S30 and the Dwarf Mini are selling at a starting price of $399. The Seastar S30 comes with a tripod included, but the Dwarf Mini does not, and that accounts for the weight difference I just mentioned. However, this tripod is a fairly basic tabletop one. For the Dwarf Mini, you can add a tripod for $89. Importantly, this is a much sturdier looking device. It has a hydraulic head, also called a fluid head, and that means you can use the telescope in equatorial mode. So just to explain that, both these devices have the capacity to operate in equatorial mode. This is essentially a way of improving the image capabilities of the device. It means you can tilt it rather than use it bolt upright. And then because of the rotation of the Earth on the axis, this means you can take longer exposures, capture sharper stars and get better images. So the Dwarf Mini tripod and head allow this. The standard Seastar S30 tripod does not. To use the Seastar S30 in EQ mode, you can add their fluid head for 79. But just to note, both of these can be used with regular photography tripods and fluid hydraulic heads if you already own them or you want to shove around. The Dwarf Mini comes with a solar filter and the basics. The Seastar S30 comes with the solar filter, the carry case, the tripod we mentioned and the basics. The way you can differentiate these devices is with the apps and the software you use for controlling them and processing images. These are both very good for both devices and the apps are being constantly updated and improved so they're not static. But the general consensus is that the Seastar app is simpler and easier to use for a beginner to get going right away, get a good photo straight to your phone. It's highly automated, simple interface. You have a bit less control over the individual exposure settings. If you want the best image straight out of the device, maybe the Seastar S30 has the edge. The Dwarf Mini app is a little bit more complex, but this is because it allows you a bit more manual control, which you might want to take advantage of as you use it more when you want more options. The Seastar S30 then is better for beginners who want automatic results. The Dwarf Mini might be better for hobbyists who want to experiment with the different parameters and see how far they can push it. One other thing to note is that the Seastar S30 defaults to giving you your images in a portrait mode, whereas the Dwarf Mini gives them to you in a landscape mode. Now, of course, these can be rotated in processing, but straight from the device for sharing, that's how they're going to be. Both telescopes will also have a mosaic mode that stitches multiple pictures together to create one very large image, effectively letting you frame the object however you like, but with more steps. So overall, where does this leave us if we're picking between the two? Firstly, I would check the live prices and see what deals might be on because one might be cheaper than the other right now. ZWO are a bigger name in astrophotography, but Dwarf Lab have been around now and proven in the smart telescope arena with the Dwarf 2, the Dwarf 3. As I mentioned, the main differential then is really the app and the processing power. The Seastar S30 is probably better if you want it for quick grab and go use in the backyard. The Dwarf Mini is probably better if you want to try and see how far you can push its astrophotography imaging limits. Let me know your views or if you have any questions in the comments below. You can check the prices using the links. Of course, there are other smart telescopes. If you want to compare these two against three other similarly priced options, check out this video here where I compare the five in this budget bracket. 
If you've got a bit more money and you want to see what the options are in the premium ones, check out a link below to a video where I cover all 12 of the best smart telescopes you can buy.